how to fix that oiling system, there's been many. Um, there's, um, number one, just leave it alone and let it ride and take your chances there. Um, another popular remedy was a $5 fix from back in the, the 70s, uh, which was you bought a oil restrictor kit. And what the restrictor kit does, does is you drill, you tap these holes for your cam bearings. You tap this one, this one, and sometimes they even would uh, restrict this hole right here. So this main oil feed that comes across is uh, common with this uh, journal, is they would actually restrict this hole so that only a certain amount of oil could get to this front main bearing. But you would put a restrictor in all of the cam bearings going down through the block. Now, that is, if you're looking at a pressure versus a pressure versus flow, yes, that sort of makes sense. I probably used maybe one of those kits 40 or so years ago, but I haven't used one since. And that's because I didn't have any other choices. I didn't have the shop that I have now. I didn't have any other way to do it. There was only one way to do it. So we did the best we could with what we had 40 years ago. Of course, we didn't have a lot of aftermarket stuff that we do now. But what that did was next in line for the oil flow, after this goes up and feeds each one of these main bearings from this um, lifter galley, is the oil comes down here, it's common with, through the, the groove in the main bearing, it's common with your cam bearing. So theory behind that was, okay, well, if we can rob the camshaft of some oil, it'll keep more here at the mains because we're whatever is being supplied by the cam, or excuse me, supplied by the oil pump, goes through the lifters, you have whatever leaks out through all the eight lifters, gets left over between the crankshaft and the camshaft. Well, if we rob the camshaft a little bit, we can keep more in the mains. Sounds reasonable, but two different things have happened. Back in the 70s, when those kind of kits were developed, those guys were running flat tap at camshafts. You had maybe 150 pounds of spring pressure. Nowadays, we have solid roller camshafts. We have 350 pounds of spring pressure, and instead of having 400 over the nose on the cam, we've got camshafts now that have 1,200 pounds of spring pressure over the nose. When you rob that cam bearing of the oil, now you have a problem of that oil coming through the bottom of the cam bearing, trying to pressurize because the cam is now pushing down on top of that, and you're robbing it of oil at the same time. The other inherent problem that you can see inside of a Cleveland is, with my flashlight here, a Cleveland has a very narrow cam bearing as far as width this way. So with that, Pressure, when you're trying to keep the, the metals from contact, uh, contacting each other, the amount of oil pressure between those two metals and the surface area between them is proportional to the power it has to keep those two metals apart. So if you have something that's really, really narrow, like a pinpoint, and I put oil on here, I can push right through that oil, no problem. But if I take a piece of glass and another piece of glass and I put oil between it, I would have a hard time ever pushing that oil out between those two pieces of glass because they are very flat and there's a lot of surface area there, it'll take a lot of pressure. So that kit, while it may have worked well back then for flat tappet cams and valve springs that we don't even have nowhere near of today, even when they ran rollers back then, they didn't have the valve springs that we do today, you're basically killing your camshaft by doing it that way. So you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're killing the camshaft, but you may save your main bearing just a little bit longer both result in you're tearing your engine down before it's too long because you're, it's depending upon what you want to fix. Do you want to fix the cam or do you want to fix the crankshaft? That's your choice with using that kind of a kit. So we don't use that kind of a kit as the oil restrictor. We want as much oil going to the cam bearing as we can to keep that cam bearing lubricated to protect that bearing. Uh, next is the lifter itself. Why does the lifter leak oil? Um, and what we're going to look at is really the difference between the hydraulic and the, and the solid lifter style, um, the way it actually oils and controls the oil, because the lifter does uh, control the oil. So to be fair, to keep apples to apples, I'm going to use two lifters from the same manufacturer, one hydraulic, one solid. A solid lifter how it actually works is you have this hole 
And you've probably seen somewhere in your lifter books over the years, I haven't really seen much uh, talk about it using it in the lifter books, but you used to always see it years ago. Lifters, when they said lifter type, they called it edge orifice oiling. And I'll explain what edge orifice oiling is. Edge orifice oiling is, this is your lifter band. So as your the lifters are in the block and the oil is going through the hole, this is where your pressurized oil is. This hole on the side of the lifter is what feeds the push rod. Now, how this lifter gets oil through here is controlled by, and this is a Chevy lifter. Let me grab a Ford lifter. No, I have a Ford lifter, but it is of a different brand, but we'll use this one anyhow. Um, we'll, we'll use the lifter here this size. I'm sorry, but like I say, this is a Chevy lifter. Uh, picked up the wrong set. So as this is going up and down in the block, the oil feed going through, actually the oil has to get to this hole. So on this lifter, this Ford lifter, you can see this one has the hole on the outer side here. So as oil is actually flowing through this lifter, the oil has to squeeze between the lifter bore and this hole. And that clearance between the lifter bore and this hole is what meters the oil going into this lifter. So that determines how much oil comes to the top end of the engine. So if you increase your lifter bore clearance, naturally this is gonna flow more oil between the lifter and the lifter bore. Likewise, sometimes people usually will cut a, a, a little tiny groove in here. It's not edge orifice oiling anymore. The orifice then is the clearance between whatever gap you've made in here, because now you have free flow from the oil pump, through the galley, through that little restriction, and then up to the top of the push rod. So you have zero restriction other than what gets to the top of the engine other than this. This right here controls everything from the oil, separates the oil from the bottom end of the engine to the top end of the engine. That little clearance right there alone. Now on a hydraulic lifter, it really works the same way. Now you'll notice the hydraulic lifter, that oil hole right there intersects the oil band, which is where the oil flows through. So what is inside of the hydraulic lifter is what controls these get full flow. So what is inside of the lifter gets full flow of oil, but the metering disc inside of the lifter is what controls the oil flow from here up to the top of the push rod. Now the other thing that does con control that um, is, naturally, this is pressurized oil all the way around. If your lifter bores are worn or big, that lifter bore then can leak all here and it can leak here. So you have two things that really kind of control the hydraulic lifter is you have your clearance for oil here, here, and the metering disc inside. Now we don't have any real control over the metering disc inside, that's up to the, the lifter manufacturer. And inside the metering disc, those are very, very, uh, let's say finely machined parts. They're machined into the microns in order to be able to do that um, oil metering. But again, this clearance, this clearance, and the metering disc is what separates the bottom end of the engine, meaning the, the main bearings, rod bearings, and cam bearings, from the push rods and the rocker arms. So those, that's your cutoff point. That is what stops the oil flow from just free flowing through the engine. Now, there's a difference between a Windsor lifter and a Cleveland lifter. And I'll use this Chevrolet lifter um, as an example. A Windsor lifter, the oil hole is in this exact location. And you can see that oil hole goes all the way through. So it is, we can see light goes all the way through that lifter. It's just a free hole right through there. Now we can also see that that is just a free hole right through the push rod slot or through the push rod cup. So you can see there's no restriction once you pass here. Now on a Cleveland block, as we looked at, you have this big opening here on the side of the lifter. So if you were to put this lifter in the block here and it were to go up and down, there's going to be a point in time at which that hole right there is into that big machined hole in the side of the lifter galley and you will have zero oil control 
from the bottom end of the engine to the top end of the engine. And if I've had many phone calls over the years of, hey, I put these lifters in my Cleveland and my oil pressure went from starting it up cold to 80 pounds and now it starts out at 60 pounds and in five minutes I got five pounds of oil pressure. That's the problem. It basically you have created a gigantic leap between the oil pump and the main bearings.